I'm a control freak. Like I am I'm a recovering control freak, um, type A, perfectionistic people pleaser, you know, all those things. And when you are like that, when you're wired like that, vocation's really hard because you're like, I'm going to screw this up or I can't screw this up or, and, and you just get, you can just freak yourself out. And so really, I, I can't say it enough, but like, it was when I really turned to the, like to my relationship with God and just started seeing him as number one, that priority, my even obsession with finding the right man or my vocation just kind of like mellowed out. And lo and behold, this guy who it just, it just was a, a really great friend who I admired. Um, I remember one thing I, I always people like, how'd you know he was the one? I was like, I remember this one night where he was, just talking. I mean, again, we used to, we had a really great core group of friends and we would all take classes together. And so it was really neat to be able to, we were just talking and I remember he, I just, I left that conversation. I was like, man, the dude is not afraid to die. Like, I just like, I was so captivated by his zeal for like life and faith. And like, he wanted to be a martyr. And I just, again, coming from my background, I was like, that is so like radical and awesome. And it was so attractive because he was so selfless. And that was one thing that I think has always brought us together is just we we love the Lord and we love bringing people to the Lord. And then all of a sudden you're, you're married and you have kids and that's now that's the goal, you know, and that's what you're working on. And it's just really, it's really fun, that chemistry again. We just, we have a lot of fun together. And- well, and I saw the same thing in you. And I think the thing that neither one of us were trying to make this happen. Neither mm-hmm. one of us were trying to find a spouse or trying to, I mean, and it's, it's sort of like authentic happiness. Like you don't go around looking for it. It happens as the byproduct of pursuing the good. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of how. Absolutely. And, out. and not perfect, not yeah. perfect, just good. <laughs> well, striving. Cause you guys are like eight years ahead of us. And, um, we look, we've looked to you, like you've given us great advice from when we've had little ones, because one of the things you said was, okay. Cause we had two, Bobby and I had two kids who are a year and a half apart. They're 18 months apart. You guys had two kids, 14 months, 14 apart. months apart. Mm-hmm. And wow. you lived in a dorm room. Mm-hmm. I mean, so tell people like oh. your first couple years of marriage, when you, when you <laughs> share that journey, like, cause people could see you guys now, you've been married for how long now? 17 years. 17. Okay. So 17 years. Mm-hmm. Um, people could look at you and like, Oh my gosh, they're so amazing. They're so perfect. They have like this amazing marriage. And you're, you're and like, they, um, and they are, and, <laughs> and they are, no. and we and love they you are. guys, no, no, liars. but you're like the first couple years of marriage, especially when you're so young, like, there is yeah. a statistic that says if you get married before the age of 25, you are 80% likely to get divorced huh. because most people are not there. There's so much maturing that has to happen. Your brain's not even fully developed. And and when you're young, like you guys just, you were growing together, mm-hmm. you know? So I want you to share what those first couple years were like. Mm-hmm. And the fact that like, why the heck were you yeah. living in a dorm room? Um, yeah, well, so glad we have four hours to talk about our first Chicago four years, years of marriage. I'm so, so glad. Settle in. Uh, settle in I everyone. Mean, in no, some ways the dorm was a reprieve from Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we got married. Um, and then we moved immediately up to Chicago where Andy was doing his doctorate. So we were, we were young and in love and I was pregnant. I threw up the last day of our honeymoon in Mexico and I thought it was the food. It was not the food. Um, I was already pregnant. And <laughs> so we always say that that was, um, that was really great cause we were open. And so it was a really beautiful, it was, it was a beautiful blessing, but it was also kind of like buckle up buttercup, you know, it was just like game on, you know? So we went through grad school Andy was getting his doctorate. Um, we had our first baby up there. We lost a friend in a tragic car accident. My brother was in a tragic car accident and almost died. We had the baby, um, Thomas, our firstborn. Love that kid. And then I was kind of um, struggling a lot with, I thought maybe it was depression or something, but I had postpartum depression, which was really hard. And then lo and behold, five months later, um, we found out we were pregnant again with Fulton. And so, and it was like, wow, that can happen. That can happen. Um, so it was just like, okay, Lord. So within a year, it was just, our whole lives were just, so different from coming from college where you kind of think you have an idea of your life to like, what is this? And, um, talk about people always say to us, they're like, Oh, we love your marriage. We love your kids. We like, we want to be we're like, Oh, you should have, you should have been around for the first five years. Like you would have been like, you can have your marriage, take your marriage and take your children. And, and I will we're be fine. Celibate. We will be fine. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, and so it was just, it was hard. I mean, grad school was really hard. Andy, everybody, um, tells you it's hard and it, it is really hard getting a doctorate and doing two masters and being young and having a young family. And we had zero money. We, we absolutely were, um, we ate a lot of oatmeal and eggs and our date nights or sometimes Olive Garden where we would split the tour of Italy and, and then we'd ask for extra breadsticks and extra salad and drink a lots of lemon in my water. And yeah, I mean, we were really, really this poor. This was like once every couple of months. Okay? Yeah. I mean, we were really poor, but it, I, I, I always say this, I'm like, but we did it together. Like we struggled together and we established our family and our marriage 
on those sacrifices. And uh, I always tell people, I'm like, if you want to really discern well, watch how you sacrifice together, watch how you suffer together, Mm. Um, because you're going to suffer together. You are going to suffer together. There is not a marriage that I know that isn't called to sacrifice and suffering together. And so those first couple of years, I think when people ask like, oh, what makes your marriage so rich and all this stuff? And I always tell people, I'm like, because we stuck it out. I mean, we, we would look at each other and be like, this is so hard. This is not what I thought I was gonna be like. This is not, you know, all the things. If you're a young couple out there right now, if you're engaged, if you're married, if you have little kids, like, and you're like, what the heck did I get myself into? Like, I, we felt that for sure. I mean, we would look at each other and be like, did we discern right? Did we pray well? Were we supposed to go to grad school? Were we supposed to have kids? Were we supposed to get, I mean, like, there's just all these questionings and all these things you question. And it was so, it was so beautiful to like, look at each other and be like, no, like I know I'm supposed to, be, like I know we're supposed to be here, um, and well, we we're gonna those, fight for our marriage. We're gonna fight for each other. We'd have those struggles, and we we had like literally this conversation. It's like, okay, I know you're not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. So let's fix this problem. Yeah, let's fix right. it. Which is like such an anchor to like have those struggles with. 